Hello, my name is Mark Anir and I'm the Head of Training and Access at the Royal Ballet School. And I'm Karen Berry, I'm Senior Teacher Training Manager here and we're delighted that you can join us today for a little chat about the Affiliate Training and Assessment Programme. Uh, we're really excited that we've been able to launch this now and we just wanted to uh, talk you through what the inspiration for developing this program is and to answer some of the questions that we've been receiving from you uh, and so hopefully you'll get a little bit more information. Um, Karen, can you think back about how, how this all started? Yes, well, it was many years ago, actually, Mark, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's kind of grown organically, really, over the years. Yeah. But I think, from both our perspective, I really do think that we thought, from hearing other teachers speak and from our own experiences working in the field, that we felt perhaps there was another way of approaching teaching children how to dance yeah. that perhaps wasn't so rooted in following a particular exercise or a particular syllabus. Yeah, from my perspective, when I see students come to audition, for mm. example, for, for our associate programs or for, for our full-time training, um, that they, they, they're often not uh, adaptable in different yes. situations. They're, they're very rooted in the one way of doing something. And this was yes. a, a way of providing them with the opportunity to get broader experiences as yes, well. Yes, ab absolutely. And again, from my own experience of teaching in the field, I really feel, what really is important is stripping it right down mm. to looking at that core skills. For example, coordination. It doesn't have to be taught using the arms in one specific way. It is great if we're able as teachers to be able to explore different ways of using the arms and then that can be dependent on the child that you're teaching or the context that you're teaching um, within. So I also think that allowing that kind of flexibility will really help align the core values of our programme to children's needs, and yeah. that's really, really important. Yeah, and I, and I think making it holistic is what we're trying mm. to do by not just focusing on a ballet technique, yes. but also developing their, their knowledge about the art form, yes. their knowledge about repertoire, their appreciation, yeah. their musicality, all those sorts of things are really important that they, that they get to see what it is that they're working towards. Absolutely, and it, it does sadden me sometimes when, as you say, you see some children in additions or perhaps out with, and you ask them, what's the music you're dancing from and they don't know, or, or what inspired you? And I think sometimes as teachers, we're so keen to have children do things right that we're frightened sometimes yeah. to allow them to experiment, and yeah. perhaps what we think is doing wrong, it's actually them learning. So I think this programme is unique in allowing teachers, giving them permission to experiment. Yep. Yeah. And we've heard, also heard from a lot of teachers since launching the program mm. how they feel that there is a need for something that is a different approach to what, what is available to them at this point in time. Absolutely. And again, it all stems back from that core values of what we're looking at. And the teacher is then free away from the constraints perhaps of having the children remember a specific way of doing it to go with the flow of the class. And if they feel that the children need to develop a particular skill, you're free to do that without worrying, oh, I've got to continue because I've got to have them learning this section of the, the syllabus or the exam. Mm. So that flexibility actually empowers the teacher yeah. and it allows children then to really have um, the skills to really delve deep into specific movement um, qualities or techniques, mm. or as you say, repertoire or choreography, yeah, depending yeah, on what you want yeah. to teach. And, and, and it all relates to each other as yes. well. You can you, yes. can you can take a sep section of repertoire yep. to be able to um, inform what they're doing in the, mm. the more technical aspects or, or, or even the appreciation. And I think that's important because children come to dance classes because they've been inspired yeah. by something they've seen yeah. or you know they've seen dancers. It's not because they've seen a tongue do. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, that, I mean, that's, I think, the other thing we noticed too, I think particularly over recent years, that children's natural sense of movement mm. um, is inhibited. So that sense of natural movement um, is getting a bit lost. Yes. So I think the program that we're developing will help them to undertake more natural ways of moving and so it becomes more organic and um, in, ingrained in their body. So when they come to do something that is more technically precise and mm, based, mm. they've got a natural uh, foundation below that to 
be able to build upon. Absolutely. It acknowledges children's motor development, yeah. looking yeah. at children's natural movement yeah. skills before yeah. then developing specialised skills. Yeah. And there sometimes can be that need in wanting teachers to try and make things perhaps um, more aligned or more perfect before the children have actually fully experienced their free yeah. movement range. Yes, yeah. yeah. E- exactly. We've been thinking a lot, even within our full-time uh, mm-hmm. training, Gee. about... How soon should you be specialising in those specifics? And I think it it, it can be later than we than we realise. Absolutely, we, yeah. we've got to build the foundations f- from a mm. from a, an earlier age, but we don't have to hone it so no. so precisely. It, it's human. really that the, the specialised skills come from the natural yeah. movement, Absolutely. not taught a specialised yeah. skills yeah. from when they're younger. Yeah. Um, so, Karen, mm. you've had your own recreational mm-hmm. school for for a number of years. Yes. How is this going to look in a school such as that? Okay, I think that's a great question. And I think for teachers working in the recreational sector, it will give them empowerment. Empowerment over what they teach, how they teach, when they teach, which is like a gift. Mm -hmm. Being able really to ensure then that you're really meeting the needs of your children so you're not constrained by time or by specific content you can really, truly match what you see in front of you. And how's that going to look on a day-to-day basis for a teacher? So on a day-to-day basis, you would have... The programme will give the teachers overarching learning outcomes. And you are then able, with the guidance of what we give, in terms of vocabulary, in terms of content, repertoire, choreography, to align that to what your children need at that time. So, for example, Mark, let's say it's at the beginning of term then perhaps I want to spend more time on body awareness and body conditioning exercises and also creativity because, you know, children have come back after the summer and they're just so inspired. Then perhaps then it's the time to really focus into developing schoolwork, for example. So I think that flexibility is just really like gold. It really does. It will enable children to be more engaged Mm -hmm. and it will enable teachers to be more enthused rather than feeling they've got to keep to a certain timeline or a certain um, way of doing things. And the the students are not coming back week on week just doing the same thing each week. No, absolutely. It's going to have that variety and and inspiration for them. And variety is really important. And people would say, oh, that's a shame. They're never actually really... Um, learning how to do one thing well, I would negate that and say, absolutely, mm. let's just take something like posy tongue levee. There's mm. not one way of doing posy yeah. tongue levee. So you can do it with different patterns, different time signatures, different arms, different relationships. So the step itself can actually be practice, which is what we yes, need to yes. develop our motor repetition. skills, repetition, yeah, yeah. but it's in different ways, it's yeah, in different formats. Yeah, 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 exactly. And on an operational level for, for teachers, what, what, what's that going to entail? Yes, this is just great. So again, What we're doing is we're giving the power to the teacher to decide when they are ready for an assessment. Now, they can then decide, actually, past few weeks, this is going well, I'm going to start working on the preparation of this class. Mm -hmm. So they might work another few weeks on just presenting it in such a way that the children are remembering, perhaps then, what they're doing, where where they're going, and then decide then, I'm going to present this for filming. So rather than having perhaps a four-month or a five-month lead in time for, yeah. for an assessment, where as a teacher you're trying to have to think who's going to be ready. Yes, yes. And I, I never yeah. get it right, Mark. Yeah. I've been teaching 35 <laughs> years. And Not everyone's never, ready at the same time. I've never got it right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And for some children you think they are ready and then you think, oh, actually, they've missed them for the past six weeks. Or other children perhaps have really just come to their own in the past mm. month. So that flexibility is just wonderful, and from an administrative point of view, yeah. actually, as well. Yeah. And, of course, not necessarily even the whole class has to mm. do it at the same time, do they? Absolutely. You, you, could, take, you could take those that are ready and yeah. those that might need a bit, a little more, bit more. More, more time could, could do it at a later time. A later time, absolutely. Yeah. So, again, it's flexibility yeah. in not just um, what you're doing but who you're presenting for yeah. that as well. Yeah. Said, we've had a lot of questions about... about the assessment and how that's going to work, mm. how, how are the students going to be assessed. Yes. And of course, we're giving that, that power, if you like, mm. as you say, we're empowering teachers, we're giving that power to the teachers to assess the students themselves. Yes. They know how they have developed and they know if yes. they uh, if a student is achieving at a certain level. Yes. Um, and Absolutely. so when they do film this, the assessment, the teachers will be giving the, the students a grade, will have yes. a, a, a grading system yep. that they will follow, but 
and it follows the learning outcomes and the yep. assessment criteria. Um, and the teachers will be able to do that. Mm. And then to ensure standards, what we're mm. looking at is those videos will be sent to us. Yes. Um, and our team will moderate. Yeah. Uh, now we had a really specific question about how can the Royal Ballet School uh, assess a student if the teacher is setting the content? Yeah. Well, Go ahead. In, 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 in that instance, I would say very easily because yeah. we're not assessing choreography right. or settings. Yeah. Yeah. We're assessing overall learning outcomes, posture, technique, coordination, artistry, musicality. And the teacher can arrange the content as they want to suit their students' mm. needs. So as the school um, moderating, not only does this um, assure standards, yep. which is really, really important, but it also, it, CPD is implicit within that for the teacher yep. themselves. Yep. So the teachers, for example, might um, look at the student and say, OK, Mark, you're going to achieve um, 60 percent. Karen, you're going to achieve 80 yep. percent. And us as the school might say, well, actually, I would say they should all be 10% higher. Mm. So I would learn as a teacher, okay, perhaps my observation skills and aligning the performance indicators to the, what I'm seeing is too low. So I'm learning then how to align my observation skills to the criteria more accurately. Yeah. It could work in the other direction, yeah, of course, it, as well. It, it, yeah. it could. And in, in that way, we're able to keep a, a, a standardisation, of mm. course, and uh, be ensuring that all the teachers are working towards the same sort, of, sort of standards. So yeah. it is a way of uh, working in universities, for example, yes, isn't it? That, absolutely, that's how and other uh, educational educational establishments. Yeah, yeah. And I do think teachers will welcome that. Mm. I would welcome being told, mm. actually, you know, mm. looking at your, your students you've presented, mm. Karen, now I think perhaps just, you know, you're, you're marking a little bit hard, why don't you try this? Yeah. And telling them why. Yes, exactly. So it's getting yeah, some yeah. feedback rather yeah. than just being left yeah, and not yeah. knowing That's what right. you're presenting yeah. is of a suitable yeah. standard. And of course, this is the way we work within the school as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. our, all our Implicit. teachers, our associate teachers for, for assessments, our full-time artistic staff for the assessments for their mm. students that they're teaching, they develop the content yes. based on the system of training, yes. uh, based on the guidelines for what happens in that a, at that age yep. level, um, but they they develop their own all shame mm -hmm. and then the panel, Chris Powney, myself, our guest uh, adjudicators, we mm -hmm. are able to assess the students on how they're achieving yes. that work. As you say, it's not on the, on the choreography. Not on the choreography. Yeah, but I really like that you said there that the CPD is implicit in that because yes. CPD is a huge part of being an affiliate teacher. And I think that's another one of our, uh, you know, really big USPs is yeah. that we are really ensuring that this is just not about training the children, it's training the teachers. Yeah. Because yeah. teachers must be, other, we must engage with CPD mm. yearly. Otherwise, we're just repeating what we've done year on year, year yeah. out. And in order for us to be exemplary teachers, we must be able to reflect on what we've done and then adapt and change our practice. Yeah. How are we going to know that if we don't have any outside involvement? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. And what's Im implicit within this program is the CPD aligns with what we're doing with our own artistic staff. Mm -hmm. It's also research-based. So we're mm -hmm. continually looking at what's out there, at new ways of doing this. Perhaps um, we hear about a different educational practice or a, a new way of teaching a specific movement, mm -hmm. or it mm -hmm. might be more on the pedagogical aspects, yeah. and we're applying that into our practice all yeah. the time. Yeah. So that's a huge thing for, for us. We, we must make sure that we're investing in our teachers as much as we're investing yeah. in students. That's right. And affiliate teachers will get this year on year on year. Yes. So they'll always be at the forefront of what's happening in, in terms of dance training. Yeah. That's another great thing about the programme, is that the CPT is compulsory. That te we are then guiding and helping, training our teachers who are affiliate teachers to upskill, to keep yeah. their skills at that level that they are then confident are being able to pass on to their, their students. Yes, yeah. and this is why we, we are making the affiliation for the teacher mm. and not uh, aligned to a school. Absolutely. It's important that any teacher 
that is delivering this program is up to date with all this information. Yes. Uh, and so that has to be directly to the teacher. So obviously we'd hope that there are a number of teachers in the school mm. that are affiliate teachers, but we, we're not passing it on to the school as a whole. Yes. So it is individual to each, which means that it's also mm. portable for them. Absolutely, if, you know, if teachers you go to a different can, school. Teachers can, can move around. For each teacher rather, they are being assured that they are aligning with our own CPD program. Yeah. And our CPD program, as you know, is really mm. flexible. So we can adapt what we're teaching, demand, depending on the demands of what we see out there in the mm. field. Mm. So if there is, as we said before, some new idea that we really feel is important or new research, we can then make sure that we do it mm. that year. Or even if there's areas from the assessments we're seeing, from the moderation yes, that we do, there might be things that we feel that could be addressed exactly. through, through that CPD so it's very adaptable. program, which is great. Yeah. And this gives us the affiliate teachers mm. uh, a, a real link to the school. Yes. So they're getting uh, the value of our Royal Ballet School brand. Yes. By being an affiliate teacher, they're getting um, access to, to marketing materials, mm. to the, being at the forefront of what we're doing in, in training, um, and it enables them to have their work validated. Yes. Their work as an excellent I, teacher validated. I think that's really important, and again, from a parental point of view mm. as well. Yeah. Um, as a parent myself, I would look for, in my community, an organisation that I felt really had the values that I would have as yes, a parent, yes. which would be, you know, always to have excellence and innovation and be diverse. And I think that is a real selling point for our affiliate yeah. teachers to have, yeah. to pass that on to their parents. Yeah. So the system of training really allows mm. to, for a lot of inclusion, mm. for students that have uh, differing uh, educational needs or disabilities, mm. physical differences, mm. um, it really allows the teacher to adapt to those situations, doesn't it? And again, that flexibility is just great for teachers working in the field. And again, from my own point of view, I really do feel that you've got to react to what you have in the room. Mm -hmm. And so for some children, they may need some settings adapted in order that you can then make sure they are performing them to the best of their ability. Mm. And others, you might need to challenge them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it really yeah. is depending. So, for example, you might take an exercise such as an assembly, and for some children who I really feel need to work on posture placement, I might just take the arms in preparatory position or even here and just work on the, the step ensuring that their body is stable and, and, and controlled. For other children who I feel their posture perhaps is quite firm, then I might have a port of brand to that as well. So because there's not actual any set settings, mm. then you can adapt that yeah, as a teacher exactly. to your children's needs. That's right. And it can be within the one class too. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have to be... Uh, separated in groups. Everyone no. can be together, but you're differentiating as it, a teacher it, to the children's a, needs. Absolutely. And again, actually from a music perspective as well, being mm. able to choose the music, yeah. um, again, to maybe just what the children are really yeah. interested yeah. in at that yeah. time. There's yeah. nothing um, wrong in taking, for example, one class completely on the Nutcracker theme or Frozen, for example. Yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, if that's what the children want to go with that day, absolutely yeah. fine. That's great. We did have a question actually about, about music where we're we going to supply music and, mm. and we're not because no. this is something that the teachers need to have the skill and develop yes. the skill to understand what music is suitable for uh, yes. exercise and what varying music because doing um, an exercise uh, a, a plie for example mm. on a on a four four or a three four has totally different muscular yes. reactions and that's important for the teachers to be able to have that adaptability and we want the students too to learn about different types of music yes. you know classical music ballet music yep. popular music and have have the teachers have that choice to be able to choose okay. the music they feel is appropriate for what they're recording. Oh, that's such so, a good point, Mark. Yeah. It's, it's so important. And I think children of today are bombarded by lots of different, um, what they hear and what they see, and they almost expect that when they come, yes. into, the, come into the studio. Yeah. Um, and so it allows you then to really think, okay, again, thinking of the children's needs, different genders, different nationalities, what interests them? Mm. What interests them? And that's a good yeah. starting point yeah. Um, yeah. for the teacher to try 
and just reach out to them by something that they actually enjoy. And again, diversity in emotional and reactions, not just from a rhythmic point of view, but gives different artistic interpretations, which is so important. Exactly, and culturally it's really important yes. because we hope that this is going to uh, be taken up around the world yeah. and, and different uh, approaches to music in different cultural yes. areas will be able to be integrated into the yeah. teacher's work. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it'd be good for, for people to understand who this program is for, what type of teacher this program is for. Great. Well, I think, first of all, this program is for teachers who value innovation, diversity, and the opportunity to have more flexibility within their own schools. Now, that doesn't mean, though, because with the Royal Ballet School, you have to have been a member of the Royal Ballet School, either through our as a child or as a student or as a dancer. It's in fact it's not necessarily for professional dancers. Mm. So anyone who has had any kind of teaching experience is welcome to apply. Yeah, yeah I think we want that, that breadth because yes, absolutely. Um, the, there is a breadth of teachers out there and we want we want that to be represented within the, the program in as the well. Program. So those that have just come to it from their own joy of learning to dance yes. and, and wanting to work with young people, that's just as valid um, really as important. any other pathway. And, and I know this year, and in fact I was going to say that, Mark, because again, other teachers have been asking, um, what is happening? Where, where do we see this going? Right. And I know yeah. this year we're planning to have our um, training in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. But Mark, yeah, where, yeah, are we yeah. where are we going? Where are we going? Yeah, well, well as, you, as you said, in, in this initial year, um, because of the practicalities and then because of this is just the start of the program, um, we are offering the, f the five days of on-site training in the UK mm -hmm. only. Um, it will mean that people applying uh, from anywhere in the world will need to be able to get to London yeah. in, in July for those five days. Uh, the rest is online mm -hmm. um, and they will need to have a certain level of English at this, yes, this point of time. Because obviously we will be delivering this training in English yeah. at, the, at, uh, at this point. Um, but uh, that doesn't uh, stop people from all around the world being involved mm. if they can do that. Because once they get back to their own schools, mm. obviously they can deliver the program in their own language. Yes. Uh, and assessments and, and all those sorts of things uh, can be done, th done that way. In the future, what we hope is that uh, we'll be able to offer training mm. in various points around the world mm. when, we, when we have a... a a big enough cohort of affiliate teachers to yes. be able to, and potential affiliate teachers to be able to do that. Wonderful. But also the rest of the training is online as well. Yeah. So it's just yeah. at the moment those initial five days that, that will need to be here in London. Great. And we're just starting also by uh, delivering levels one to three. So those teachers will go into their schools with um, the tools to, de to deliver levels one to three. Yeah. So that primary age uh, school student and I think that's actually quite good just to mention that we do have plans for levels four to six Absolutely. to be rolling yeah. out pretty soon yeah. as well, yeah. and also yeah. the enhanced yeah. levels. So yeah. perhaps yeah. it's quite a good idea just to briefly say okay. that we do have plans for the future. We, we do, Higher. yeah. So, so for any new, new affiliate teacher, they will be required to do the training for, for mm. le uh, levels one to three first. That will be the first entry point yes. into, the, into the training. But in subsequent years, when they are ready, and mm. if they are ready, they may only want to teach levels one to yes, three. Yes, of course. That, that's that may be all that they uh, would like to do. But in subsequent years, they will be able to, to come back and have training on levels four to six as well, which is your secondary age student, mm. and our enhanced route. For, the, for the, the students that perhaps do want to think about a, a career vocationally um, in any dance form, not necessarily even ballet, yes. but that will give them um, an enhanced uh, learning program that they can use towards that development uh, as a vocational dancer. Great. So I think it's, it's all there. It's certainly all in our minds. Yes, it's, it it's, is. it's been germinating in our minds for, for, quite a, a while. For, for quite a while. And it is exciting that we are actually able to mm. get this program uh, on up and running. And like you, Mark, I'm really looking forward to welcoming a wonderful group of teachers for our first year and looking forward also to working with everybody into the future.